Hi, in this tutorial, I will demonstrate how to use the calculator in Pairview for processing your data. So a lot of things we do here is you can think about it as a simpler way to do the things we did with Python VTK in the previous tutorials, but of course with limited functionality. Okay, so I have loaded my data here. So if I click on the calculator filter, I can here process my data and do some simple post-processing to my data. So the first thing you need to notice is that you select the attribute type. If it's point data here under scalars, you have all access to all the scalars that are point data and all the vectors that are point data. And if your data is cell data, you need to first select cell data. So in our case, we mainly have point data. So then here I can do some operations on my data and notice that I have in this example, for example, velocity vector, volatile source vector, and I also can access the individual components here too. You can see the underscore X, Y, Z components. So just a very basic example. I can do, for example, cosine of the X component of volatile source vector, parentheses open, parentheses closed, and I can name something for the result. So I can say, uh, I don't know, results, while she stress. So I can name, provide some name and then I can apply. And then here I make sure I'm selecting the new thing I created, results while she stress, and I'm visualizing it. So it's just some random uh, visualization of while she stress, but that's nice. We've seen, we have created a new array here called results while she stress. That's basically the cosine of the X component of while she stress vectors. Okay, so we just for example, but you could you know do any kind of calculated type scaling of your arrays here. Another example of that, which is perhaps more useful, is doing dot products. So let's say let's go back to calling this results. I want to use this dot filter parentheses open, and then I select dot product between wall shoe stress comma, and let's say I hat. Parentheses close. So what this does, it does a dot product between Wallace stress and I hat, which is the unit Cartesian coordinate system coordinate in X direction. So this will give me the output of this, which is I'm going to naming results, will should be the X component of Wallace stress vector. So let me apply that and then visualize results. So this is uh, what I created. If I go back and visualize my original Wallace stress, and here I can select if I want to visualize magnitude or the x direction. So the x direction of Wallace stress that I visualize should be the same as the result that I created, which you can see it is the same. Okay, so this is another nice thing we can do. Another thing we can do is that we can create vector fields out of scalar fields. Okay, how? So let's say I want to create some vector that's always one in the x direction. So I do one times i hat. So here I click i hat, or you can type it two, then plus. Let's say in the y direction, I want it to be, I don't know, the um, uh, y component of y issue stress. So it's like that, multiplied by j hat plus, I don't know, so it's a constant value three times k hat. So that's you know, I created a vector field where in the X it's always one, in the Y it's the Y component of my volatile stress vector, and in Z it's constant three, and I called it results. Apply. So now in results, I have this new vector field, which you can, can visualize as a vector or its magnitude, or it visualize its different components as well. So you can see the X and Z components are constant as we define. Okay, so now these are some just some introductory things. So you can see you can do some, you know, fairly simple uh, post-processing of your data here. But perhaps what becomes a little bit more interesting is when you combine the calculator with some other functionalities you have in Pairview filters. So an example of that is, let's say we're interested in calculating the divergence of wallace stress vector field. Okay, so I talked about in another tutorial under Walsh of Divergence Calculation with Python VTK in detail about how we do this with Python VTK and what is the significance of Walsh of Divergence and topology. But, and here I'm gonna show you a simple way to do that in Pairview without even, without the need of Python VTK. So you load your data here. We wanna apply the divergence to the normalized Walsh vector field because that gives us nicer, data from topological analysis perspective. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply calculator. I'm going to call this Walsh stress normalized. 
and the nice thing here is that I can calculate the magnitude of any vector field I want. And this is useful, for example, if you want to threshold out based on velocity magnitude, you have to do this as a first step, then apply the threshold filter because threshold could only be applied on scalar fields. So you can turn a vector field into a scalar array here by applying the magnitude field, magnitude in calculator. But in this case, we don't want magnitude or we really want normalized. So and that already exists. You can either, you know, take your, of course you have two options. You can take Walsh's divide by mag, Walsh's that's one way you can do that. But the easier way is that to just use this normalized. So parenthesis open, Walsh's parenthesis closed. That normalizes my Walsh's vector. I'm calling the resulting array Walsh's normalized. Apply. Okay, now, now I go to filters alphabetical and I apply the gradient filter. So if I go to gradient, there I go. So what do I want to calculate gradient of? So in under scalar array, I provide one issue stress normalized. So it's a vector. So I expect the gradient to become a tensor or second order tensor, three by three matrix. So the result array name, I call it gradient, the default name, apply. So now if I color gradient, you can see it's got eight components, which we talked about this uh, in, um, in our Python mitigate tutorial. So these are the eight components of the three by three matrix, or the nine compon components rather. It starts from zero to eight, sorry. So the nine components of your three by three matrix. You can visualize individual components of the, of the Walsh's gradient tensor or just the magnitude of the entire tensor, Euclid, Euclidean uh, norm. Okay, now I want to get divergence. So let me apply calculator to that gradient. Let me recall the result name, Walsh stress divergence. And what do I do? So under scalars, I have access to the nine components of my gradient tensor. So the divergence is the trace. So it's going to be the one, one component, which goes by zero, plus the two, two component of the tensor, which goes by the fourth one and then the three, three component of the tensor, which is the last one. So this is a trace, the sum of the diagonal components of the three by three matrix. Um, and I call it, sum them up, call it Walsh's divergence, apply. Now I have my Walsh's divergence visualized. So I, as I mentioned in the previous tutorial, I rescale it down to a lower value, minus 10 to 10. And I can see, for example, um, here I can see the manifold that I talked about, stable and stable manifold. So for example, here the Walsh's divergence is positive and high. That's a source type fixed point. So if I go back to my original data and I take Walsh's stress and I do surface LIC visualization. So I am going to apply surface LIC integrator to Walsh's stress. Let me bring enhanced mode on. So here you can see you have a source type fixed point. And if you visualize the Walsh stress divergence, you see this positive value. And also in this point here, where you have a line of high positive, another line of high negative, these are eigenvectors. These are the eigenvectors of the saddle type fixed point that you have in your Walsh stress vector. Field. So here we are looking at the Walsh stress divergence. And we can also add the vector field uh, glyph on top of that for better visualization, as we already did in the Python tutorial for calculating Walsh's divergence. So this is a great example of you showing you how you can do nice things with the calculator filter um, by combining the calculator filter with other filters available in Paraview to analyze your data. And you can, of course, do file, save data, and um, save this output, which will provide for you this Walsh's divergence array in a file that you can save. Thank you.